Main points again. The miners' leader, Mr Gormley, has told the government to stay out of wage negotiations and get on with their own job. The Egyptian and Israeli foreign ministers will meet in London later this month in another effort to get things moving towards a Middle East peace settlement. The Archbishop of York has defended Prince Charles's comments on that disagreements on church doctrine cause people needless distress. Sue Barker is out of Wimbledon. Virginia Wade is through. Mike Brearley got a duck in the test. And that's the news so far this evening from me. Goodbye. Tonight, World in Action presents the disturbing results of a six-month investigation into Britain's extreme right-wing party, the National Front. Party workers, infiltrators, defectors and victims tell of brutality and deception. A file of confidential documents never before seen in public shows that behind the party's respectable public face are the secret Nazis. That's World in Action, the National Front, tonight, 8.30. Now the Thames area weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow Tuesday. It'll be cloudy and windy tonight with some heavy showers. Minimum temperature 8 degrees centigrade. Tomorrow will be a cool, mostly cloudy day with only a little sunshine. Showers are likely then too and some of them will be heavy. Winds will be fresh northwesterly and the maximum temperature tomorrow will be 15 degrees centigrade. That's very cool for early July, so not an attractive prospect. Today's pollen count was 7, which is very low. That's the weather forecast. Next, it's Thames at 6. Hello, this is Thames at six, and in tonight's programme, we'll be doing it our way, which is very different from the way that Nicky Horn discovered Sid Vicious doing it. Oh, no. We'll be finding out why these people are celebrating down at the sewage works in their best frocks. And returning to the battle of Bethnal Green Hospital. But first, news of three murder inquiries in Essex. The latest concerns the death of a 21-year-old Guyanese nurse whose body was found last night concealed in an underground shaft at Claybury Mental Hospital at Woodford Bridge. Bob Southgate has the details. The body of the nurse, Miss Sumitra Shiram, was found by three 16-year-old boys who were playing in the hospital grounds. They lifted up a manhole cover and saw the body in a shaft about 10 feet below. Miss Shiram worked at Whipstross Hospital, four miles away in Leytonstone, and had been missing for a fortnight. Her hands had been tied behind her back with a blouse, which was all she was wearing when she was found. She'd been strangled. Police say that a 25-year-old man is helping them with their inquiries. Meanwhile, police investigating the death of 53-year-old Mrs. Vera Bullock, who was found tied up and suffocated at her home in Chadwell St. Mary last Friday, are examining a theory that she was killed by her nephew, 29-year-old Raymond Briggs, who then committed suicide. Mr. Briggs was found hanged in a copse at nearby Terrell's Heath on Saturday morning. A spokesman at the murder room at Tilbury Police Station told me this afternoon, we can't rule out a link between the two deaths. Police are looking for anyone who saw Mrs. Bullock on Thursday or Mr. Briggs on Friday. Mr. Briggs, who walked with a limp, used to exercise his dogs on Terrell's Heath most days. And in Woodford, police have issued a photo fit picture of a man they want to interview in connection with the murder of a part-time barman at the Rising Sun public house last Sunday night. The man's described as aged between 25 and 30, 5 foot 6 tall, with blonde hair. He was wearing a grey roll neck sweater and black jacket and was seen shortly after the murder in an orange crash helmet. He's described as slim and he would have needed to be since he made his escape head first through a leaded light window in the front lounge of the pub. This morning, the papers were calling it the biggest clash between the royalty and the church for 40 years, it being Prince Charles's remarks to a Salvation Army meeting in which he criticised those aspects of religious doctrine which, in his words, cause unnecessary distress. Was the prince referring to the wedding difficulties of his cousin, Prince Michael of Kent, or was he worried about his own future? Is Charles in love with a Catholic, queried the son, as perhaps only it could. Does it all matter anyway? With me is a leading Roman Catholic layman and staunch monarchist, Norman St. John Stevens, MP. 
Norman St. John Stevens, do you think Prince Charles was referring specifically to the marriage of his cousin when he made those remarks? I would think it unlikely. It may have been somewhere in the back of his mind, but it would be very unusual for a member of the royal family on such a public occasion to refer to a family difficulty in that way. I see the people have taken it like that. I rather doubt whether he was referring to it. Was then he expressing the misgivings of thousands of people? He may have expressed what is in people's minds, certainly, about this, because I think uh, a lot of people feel very sad and disappointed uh, that uh, a couple like this haven't been able to have a marriage in church. They can't be married in the Church of England, they can't be married in the Roman Catholic Church, and they've had to put up with the second best in a register office. And I think many people have sympathy with them. They feel they've been caught up in a kind of ecclesiastical dispute, and they've been the ones who've suffered. Couldn't the Pope have made an exception in their case and allowed them to marry in church? After all, the Baroness is a staunch Catholic. Yes, the Pope could have made an exception, but I think it would have been very invidious for him to make an exception for a, a royal couple, because after all, the rules are for everyone. The rules are there, and the rules say, this is the rules of the Roman Catholic Church, that the Roman Catholic partner has to make a promise to do all that's possible to bring up the children in the Catholic faith. And clearly, from the words of the Baroness, from uh, the words of the Prince, it was impossible for that condition to be fulfilled. And so, I would pass on to the next stage. I would say, within the parameters of the existing rules, I think the Pope uh, was probably right to take the decision he did. But then I asked myself, are these rules right? And I think if two people of different faiths get together in marriage, they've created an ecumenical situation, they've created a relationship between two churches, they're responsible for the upbringing of the children, and it should be their decision, free from any pressure from any church, as to how they decide the children should be brought up. Would you have counted as pressure the Vatican official who said that he regarded Prince Charles's remarks as a bit of a cheek? Isn't that a bit strong? I think it's a bit of a cheek for a Vatican official, an anonymous being, uh, to speak out in that way. After all, the people who should speak are the heads of the congregation.